was ever an outfit that screamed Whiskey Grandpa. This is the one. Quick, someone get me a part in a Mumford and Sons songs where he goes, Woo! I literally waited that whole song just for that. <laughs> so. Hello, Quokes. Am I right? So cute. So for this week's project, I wanted to make some quilts. I have pretty much been wanting to do this all winter. It is mid-February and New England doesn't get warm again until just about the end of May. So I have plenty of time to sport my creation. <sighs> Now it's no secret I am a huge fan of the fantasy genre. Maybe that ties in with my love of cloaks. I'm gonna make two cloaks today. One for me and one to give away. I feel like sometimes cloaks can be hard to find and if they are available, then they're usually really expensive because they are a heck ton of fabric. So I thought it might be nice to, you know, make a cloak for someone for free. <laughs> it's kind of a better item to do a giveaway with. It's basically one size fits all. It's not like a dress that I made for myself with my exact measurements. So, nothing quite says I am escorting Frodo to Mordor like a cloak. I thought that would be kind of an interesting thing to talk about while we make these cloaks is why don't we wear them anymore? Oh, my neighbor. Don't look at me, don't look at me. <laughs> this is how I always sit. What do you mean? Something I find really interesting with cloaks, compared to other vintage items, get you a few extra glances, a couple of these. But you know, honestly, the older I get, the more I don't give a fluff about what anyone thinks about what I'm wearing. And if I wanna dress like a full elven warrior, then I'm gonna do so. I've always found that cloaks kind of have a costumey feel to them. I thought it'd be interesting to kind of talk about that and dissect why that is. And then towards the end, maybe we can talk about my experience wearing cloaks and the pros and cons. Hey, cloaks, what do you think? Dink, dink. This video is sponsored by Audible, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. For now, let's talk about the pattern and fabric. Okay, this is the pattern that I plan to use. Simplicity 5794. It is essentially just four different styles of cloaks. We are going to do A and classic C. I think I'm probably going to keep A just because I have a couple cloaks that do look like C. I feel like I'm going to find once I open this up that it's going to be a very, very simple pattern. My sort of reliance on patterns has uh, been very interesting. I just get so nervous. I feel like someone could easily be like, okay, a cloak is just a giant triangle. And I'd be like, no, 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 no. Show me. Yeah, this is probably the easiest pattern I've ever witnessed in my entire life. I'm pretty sure C is just four pieces. A is a little bit more just because we have a capelet on there. I will assume that these are going to be gigantic pattern pieces. Although it may be simple, it is a lot of fabric. So now that we have the pattern all squared away, let's talk about the fabric that I got for each cape cloak. Ah. <laughs> So I got two different kinds of wool. Ooh. I got this wool from Fabric Mart. Basically they sell dead stock fabric. Okay, that's not gonna work. I need some leverage. That's so heavy. shockwave. So first up is this really cozy wool. Oh, mm, that's nice. Dark gray, 100% wool, chunky sweater. And this was $17.50 per yard. I got five and a half yards of it, but it's 63 inches wide. I think this is going to be for the giveaway cloak. And then I got, oh, boy, I'm going to be ripped. Burnt umber wool slash nylon brushed coating Michael Kors. 58 inches wide, 17.50 per yard, and I got six yards just because I plan for this to be my cloak and you need a little bit more fabric for the little capelets. I don't have a cloak that's brown. I wanted a cloak that would match 90% of my entire wardrobe. 
and that was this. Do you like me literally moving a few feet in my living room and changing the camera angle? My attempts to keep the attention span of viewers? I don't know. Oh, I'm over here now. What it's like to live in my house, a video essay. I feel like the first thing to do is take out the pattern and cut out the pattern pieces that I do need. I feel like with projects that have a lot of fabric, it can deceptively seem very simple. The challenge comes in time. The more you need to sew, the longer it takes. I think the pattern calls for lining, but I personally don't think that cloaks need a lining. Take a look at these banner pieces. <laughs> so this pattern came with a subsection that you just tape on and match these little zodiac killer symbols. pattern pieces we have two hoods hood for the gray cloak brown cloak which looks like it's gonna be like square at the top i am confusion upper capelet and lower capelet for the one i'm going to keep and then oh my god the bohemoth pattern pieces for the actual cloak big girl next thing to do is laying out the fabric pinning and then cutting, which I, I foresee being a little bit of an exercise. We're gonna do that tomorrow. See you then. Hey, okay. Good morning. Yep, I don't know what this outfit is. I feel like I'm a mix of like a medieval merchant and Inigo Montoya. All right, so today we're gonna make some cloaks. So as you saw yesterday, I did cut out all of the pattern pieces, which is not much. So let's lay out some fabric, shall we? So long shall I see you again. So long I don't know what it is about big flat pieces of fabric that make me want to just lay on them. Is that a monkey brain thing? Bertha, come here. <sighs> Lovely. Do you like that too? I told you. Bro. Get. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> Don't. So let's pin these babies down, and then we can chat a little bit about cloaks. Just because I'm curious, why in your opinion do you think people in general stopped wearing cloaks? For science. I mean. Boop. That is hefty. Alright, had a little snack. Now we're ready to pin. While I find um, hot, gooey cinnamon buns positively scrummy, Even better is cinnamon roll leftovers that have been kept nice and chilly in your fridge. Ooh, 
can't say you never learned anything from this channel. So I have um, the four pieces here. So I'm just gonna pin, oh, this just picks up everything that's on the floor. <laughs> so I'm taking the two back pieces, putting right sides together, matching the notches like so. While we do that, I figured we could talk about cloaks and why they've kind of gone out of style. Now I feel like this is kind of obvious. Things that were fashionable don't tend to stay in fashion for hundreds of years. Cloaks are an interesting case for me because I feel like there are some styles that have remained a bit timeless when it comes to outerwear, especially pea coats, trench coats. It's interesting that cloaks kind of got the short end of that stick. When I wear cloaks, you do get a few extra looks of people being like, it does have kind of that connotation of a fantasy costume, going to a play or a renaissance fair. Brain cells are working overtime. Okay, now it all looks the same. Okay, all right, okay, okay, okay. Let's read some of your opinions why cloaks simply aren't to go to anymore. <laughs> they made people too powerful. Patriarchy. <laughs> they got in the way of arm use, which is a point, but there are cloaks that have like arm hole openings. Coats work better if clothes, if clothes open, cold air get in, if clothes, clothes, ah, wow. If clothes open, cold air get in, if clothes, co closed, if clothes, closed, cold air stay out. I like that one. Cowardice, for the same reason we abandoned the Snuggie. Fear. Someone said they've always found cloaks to be drafty. Lots of fabric, the smaller slash less fabric, the more profit. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> Based on the history of superheroes, deadly disasters due to capes, I think cloaks ousted. Very, very valid points. <laughs> A lot of people are saying that cloaks are good for keeping the rain off, the coats are better for warmth, but I will challenge that. I did a little reenactment thing with my dad and it was absolutely freezing and we were outside for a very long time. I wore my big giant black cloak. I felt like I was more warm than I would have been in a coat. It almost acts as like a bubble of heat, keeping your body heat just trapped in there. And this one did have armholes, so I was able to use my arms if I wanted to and if I didn't want to, I could just Retract my arms back in there like a little turtle. <laughs> Let's see how this baby swooshes. Oh my. Oh. I feel powerful. <laughs> I'm so happy. I am going to stitch these panels together and then I believe I work on the capelet and the hood. Let's get to work. Okay, so here we've got the lower capelet and the upper capelet. Um, without thinking, I just kind of assumed this was the side I was supposed to pin together, but I definitely got that wrong, as you will see. I was supposed to do this one. <laughs> it's kind of the same idea. So you stitch along there and then do the hem. Oh my gosh. Are you so comfy? Mm. Hem time. So what I do for rounded hems, I'm not sure if you're supposed to do this, but I just basically press the edges so that it doesn't get all garbled. And then I actually wanted to fold this over one more time so it looks like this. And then when you sew it, it's nice and clean like so. The capelet was kind of confusing and that's because I did the first step wrong. So I knew that it had to be turned inside out, but things just weren't aligning. Uh, they were very lopsided and weird, so I tried to rearrange it and it just, it was not working out. Behold, nature's cruel joke. Look how cool it is outside. It's so misty and cool. And wowie, would that make for some amazing photos and video. But am I going to be done in time to uh, take advantage of it? Probably not. Mother Nature is just sitting there like, Oh, you almost had it. You gotta be quicker than that. 
Just had a small setback where I was trying to put the upper capelet and attach it to the lower capelet and things were just like really asymmetrical and weird. I actually attached the upper capelet pieces at the wrong end. I attached the shorter end that's supposed to go right here together as if they were the back seam. Not a huge deal, I just seam ripped it and now I'm gonna re-sew it. Nose to the grindstone and I hope, I'm praying that I could at least take a little bit of video of this amazing weather before the sun goes down, but I'm not very hopeful and I'm a little bit stressed. In case you couldn't tell, let's get to work. So I started work on the hood only to realize that this was the wrong hood, so quickly I just whipped up the right one. <laughs> Then it came down to attaching all of these layers. Now this barely went through my machine, so later on I do end up hand sewing. Added a little button on here, and then a little loop. Right about now is the time during my more ambitious projects where I <laughs> I'm regretting it. Cloak number one is pretty much done. Um, it's a little rough around the edges, but for now it's fine. I just did the reveal shots and they are, <laughs> if I don't say so myself, I was able to catch this beautiful mist. I'm so happy about it. I'm still kind of on that content creator high. Okay, uh -huh. let's go. Totally worth it. <laughs> I'm just gonna start this next cloak. It is pretty much, why did I say it like that? It is pretty much the same exact process as cloak number one, except a little bit more simple because we're not doing the capelets. But I also don't wanna cut too many corners just because this is not for me, it's for someone else. So I don't want it to look like complete garbage. I switched into my PJs and we're just gonna get shit done. Let's do it. He's reached the point where he's completely fed up with my shit. He's like, I'm not gonna move, you move. Classic Frodo, am I right? I feel like that spin needed to be more dramatic. I wanted to take a little bit to talk about the sponsor for today's video, which is Audible. I'm so excited to be working with them because it is something that I truly use all the time. Audible is a selection of audiobooks, thousands of titles right at your fingertips. What we've been doing is listening to Robert Jordan's The Wheel of Time, which is an amazing fantasy series. If you love Lord of the Rings and you love medieval fantasy, it is the perfect thing to start. And then every week we have a virtual book club with our friends where we discuss the chapters that we read for the the previous week. We also finished the first Mistborn book. It's honestly a way for us to sit and enjoy each other's company. Putting an audiobook right on the TV, it's just a nice way to sit and zone out and get lost in a story. And each month Audible members get a free audiobook and access to the Audible Plus catalog. So if you did want to check out Audible and get started on your audiobook adventure, you can head to the link in my description or you can text Rachel M to 500 500. And without further ado, Let's get back to the second cloak. This fabric is like working on a cloud.
sucked. <laughs> oh my god. My brain is frozen. That was so cold. The ground is frozen. Oh my god. Oh, it's so cold. Holy shit. It hurts. Due to current wind conditions, it feels like it's 18. My fingers are still defrosting. Ta-da! Hi. Excuse me? The cloaks are complete. Oh, you're so warm. Uh, I'm so pretty. Oh, wow. So a little wrap up and then a uh, personal pros and cons as to wearing cloaks. I really like how these uh, came out, especially uh, my cloak. I really, really love the detailing up here. The process itself, you know, it, it wasn't super stressful and you feel really accomplished when you walk away with something grand, I guess, for not a lot of skill. So for this cloak, I did go in last night and added just a little bit of fabric around the neck because it was just raw edges because normally the lining would hide that. The same thing for the uh, gray cloak. So as far as pros and cons for wearing cloaks, we will start with the positive. To put it simply, they just hit different. Just instantly makes you feel like you're going on an adventure. It makes you feel powerful, like a vampire or an evil villain, ready to escape up your castle steps. For me, cloaks are kind of a cheap way of storytelling when it comes to photos and video. Cause you know, you put someone in the same setting wearing a modern coat and it's like, okay, who's she? But then you switch it out for a cloak and all of a sudden it becomes, okay, who is she? because it has that kind of historical vibe and fantasy vibe kind of gets your brain going as to what the story is behind it and who that person is I do find them quite warm i will say when i was filming the gray cloak the cloak did keep blowing open because it was windy i could just hold it closed and that was really warm. Another pro is that it is basically like carrying a big old blanket around. And me and Nick went camping in Vermont. It got quite cold at night uh, around the fire and I was able to just kind of pull all the fabric from my cloak and just like sit with it. It's like being huddled up in a giant cocoon, which is something that you don't necessarily get with coats. There's a possibility that you could camouflage yourself as a piece of nature to escape enemies. Now as far as the cons, for me personally, I have the same problem with long skirts, but basically if you are going somewhere, there's a chance that, you know, you're going to get caught on something or in an antique store or something, you have to be very gentle. <laughs> the amount of times I've almost broken things in antique shops. Getting into cars can be a little tricky. Sometimes you will find yourself in motion and your cloak is not, therefore your neck just goes like, <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I discovered last night that Binks quite enjoys it. Number one, right skin, no gap. <laughs> what are you doing? Gotcha, red handy. That's it. I'm so happy that I not only made one for myself, but I'm also really excited to give the gray cloak away to someone, my child. <laughs> spent many an hour watching Mythbusters and nursing it to life, so take good care of it. Thank you Audible for sponsoring this video and I hope that you guys had some fun. I love you whether you're new or old to this channel. If you're new here and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload every Friday and we have fun here. And I will see you in my next video. Bye! Oh, and another thing, I am legitimately sore from working on these cloaks. My glutes are screaming. <laughs> okay, that's it, goodbye. Play, I will wait. Wait a minute, by no, Willow. No, sure. Playing no, 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 although music. this is a good song. Yes, it does have some Kong, Kongs. He's so handsome. Okay. okay. <laughs> Where did I put it? Ugh. Other people are allowed to walk in our neighborhood. I don't know what to tell you. Do not aggressively yawn at me. Oh my gosh. The saddest man. What? Stop looking at me like that. 
you know it's cold when the mud is frozen. <laughs> Dr. Evil. <laughs> <laughs>